About 15 years ago, the Koreans and the Japanese both independently set up organisations to organise robot football, and they've both gradually become sort of globalised over the years. And about five years ago, uh, you know, I decided that it, it would be a great thing to get our students involved in, in that it, it gives them a project which has all of the technology, uh, the management skills, you know, the, the mechanical design, uh, electrical design, uh, you know, that they require, but all in a package which, which really excites uh, young people and, and you know, gets the best out of them. We've basically got two different you know, systems here. One which is a wheeled robot. They're smaller robots, so we, we, they're, you know, they're built into a much uh, tighter package. They're lighter, they're much, much faster to accelerate, and also the processing power that they've got on them is much greater because we've used smaller surface mount chips in order to do it. But you know, the exciting one for me is the new robots, uh, which we haven't had before, which are basically uh, bipedal robots. They look pretty much like scaled down humans. So rather than running around on, on wheels, they walk around, or you know, perhaps more accurately, I should say, they, they uh, cartwheel to move sideways. Uh, they do forward and backward rolls in order to get up the pitch you know, quickly, either forwards or backwards. We have uh, machine vision cameras uh, above the pitch or on the, in the case of the bipeds, on the robots that detect colours, colours of the ball, colours of the uh, strip of the other team. From that, figure out where all the uh, robots and positions are and then use vaguely uh, artificial intelligent algorithms to then uh, calculate uh, what their next movements should be. The aim of the robot football community is to have a team that can beat the best team of humans uh, by the year 2050, uh, which is quite a, uh, you know, a challenging uh, goal. One of the uh, major problems is going to be the safety aspect, where uh, considering the strength and power of a robot, or the potential strength and power, uh, we could really do some damage. Uh, so one of the significant challenges will be how to uh, limit the robot's ability in that way. If the technology keeps developing at the pace that it is doing at the moment, and uh, you know, if sufficient money is, is thrown at the problem, then I've, I've no doubt. I mean, certainly some of the things that we're seeing coming out of Japan, Korea, and also the States, uh, you know, it, it's, you know, I won't say it's, it's getting there, but it's, it's certainly heading in the right direction. At the top, yes, the guys take it pretty seriously. Uh, it, it's just like any other competition. You know, if you've been working hard for it for 12 months, when it comes around to the competition, uh, yeah, you want to win. One of our guys ended up uh, refereeing a match at one of the World Championships, which ha actually was a rerun uh, because the, the first game between China and Korea had ended up in a fight between the, uh, the humans. So uh, you know, that, that's how seriously it does get at times. We win a few, uh, we lose a few as well. Uh, I think it's fair to say that on a global scale we can't match you know, the top teams with the levels of funding that they've got. There is a possibility that we'll be going to the World Cup in uh, San Francisco uh, in a few months where uh, at the last World Cup we uh, were uh, extremely pleased with our performance. Uh, unfortunately it is still dominated by the real world champions who are Austrian, Singapore, Korean but quite hopeful of making gains.